Hello everyone, welcome back to today's lecture of computer organization and architecture. So today we will be learning about computer architecture in a bit details. So let's get to learning. Let's start with the formal definition of computer architecture. So it's basically the design of computers including their instructions, its hardware components and system organization. Now it has got two parts. First, the instruction set architecture which includes the specification that determine how machine language programs will interact with the computer. Next, we have the hardware system architecture which deals with the computer's major hardware subsystems like CPU, storage, input output etc. It includes both the logical design and the data flow organization of the subsystems and hence determines their efficiency. Let's try and understand this concept with the help of an illustration. Suppose we want to add two values 2 and 3 and store the added value in a variable named x. Now this simplification can be performed in various ways based on the available hardware. These are some examples of the different ways the simplification can be performed. Now from these, one or more ways can be selected for a specific type of computer. This sees nothing but the ISA. Suppose this one is selected. So all the other operations will also have similar type of instructions. Now based on this, the hardware will be chosen. As in this specific case, we will need at least two different memory locations and an added circuit. It is the rudimentary concept of hardware system architecture or the HSA. Now it's really important to distinguish a computer's architecture from its implementation. I hope it was also clear from our previous discussion that the implementation is the realization of computer in hardware and includes the choice of technology, speed, cost and so on. Whereas the architecture doesn't really define an implementation, yet they both influence one another. Generally computers with the same ISA will run the same kind of programs and are also said to belong to the same family. This concept will be more clear as we progress eventually. Now we will move on to the classifications of computer architecture but before diving straight into it, a bit of a history lesson is required so that we can properly understand various nomenclatures. Now we already know that computer architecture is the design of computers and the great 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 ancestor of today's ultra modern computing devices was the analytical engine. It was the first proposed mechanical general purpose computer designed by the great computer pioneer Charles Babbage. He was assisted by Lady Ada Lovelace, who was the first one to come up with the basic idea of having a language in order to operate the proposed machine. So, all the ladies out there, more power to you. If it was not for Lady Lovelace, we wouldn't be enjoying the luxury of software today. And just an FYI, Lady Lovelace was tutored by D. D. Morgan, Augustus D. Morgan, whose D. Morgan's law brought revolution to the world of Boolean algebra of George Boole. We all know about that, right? Then comes the next big milestone, the advent of computability and non-computability. Alan Turing figured it out which problems can be solved using computers. He has widely been considered as the father of computer science and artificial intelligence since then. Now alongside Turing, another name is very frequently associated with computation and it is Johann von Neumann or more popularly known as John von Neumann. This very Hungarian genius was not only a child prodigy who could divide an 8 digit number by another 8 digit number within just a fraction of second when he was just about 6 years old, but also the great mathematician who grabbed the full time professor position at Princeton University by the age probably 30. Yes, you heard me right. Not a reader, not a lecturer, but a full time professor by the age of 30. Funny story, Neumann even offered Turing for a research assistantship under his supervision in quantum mechanics at the Institute of Advanced Studies where only the greatest of minds were invited to work. Also, after the Second World War, Neumann brought together gems from around the world to work as a team in the advancement of computation. Alright, enough with the history for now. Let's get to know about why we are so much interested about this marvelous character, John von Neumann. You remember this typical block diagram of computer from our previous session, right? Well, this is the person behind it. This architecture is named also after him and known as von Neumann architecture. 
So to conclude, I would like to quote another genius, Professor David Brailsford of University of Nottingham, who has been teaching computer science for more than 50 years now, and I believe no one could explain this in a better way. He says, if Turing is the father and Babbage was the grandfather and if Lady Ada, Countess of Lovelace, was the great aunt, then John von Neumann was the impossibly talented, impossibly charismatic, very wealthy uncle to computing. Alright people, that will be all for this session and I'm pretty confident that we all are now ready for the next session where we dive straight into the various classifications of computer architecture. See you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.